I rise today to express the urgent need to take up and pass a piece of legislation that has great meaning for me and my fellow West Virginians, and that is important to our nation's coal mining communities, and that's the Miners Protection Act. Seventy years ago, in 1946, President Harry Truman secured an agreement committing the federal government to protect lifetime health and pension, and pension benefits for our nation's miners. These men and women earned this through their tireless and often very, very dangerous work to produce the coal that has powered our nation and spurred economic growth for years. Over the course of seven decades, Congress has kept their promise. In 1992, a bipartisan effort in Congress led by my predecessor, Senator Rockefeller, resulted in the passage of the Coal Act to address the health care needs of orphaned coal miners. Those are miners whose companies are no longer in existence. In 2006, I voted for legislation that built upon the Coal Act and continued the bipartisan congressional tradition, fulfilling our promise to coal miners and, and their families and retirees and protecting their promised health care benefits. In 2012, the bankruptcy of Patriot Coal placed the health care of more than 12,000 retirees and dependents at risk. A temporary solution, which has been going on for a couple of years, has preserved health care for these individuals, but that short-term solution is nearing an end. Additional coal industry bankruptcies that we I feel like we hear about one a week, and they're major, have threatened health care benefits for more families. If we don't act now, health care for more than 21,000 minors and families will be lost by the end of this year, just six months from now. You know, West Virginians really know what mining has meant to our state and to our nation. And our miners have depended on these benefits. Every day I'm reminded of this. As Char from Bob White, West Virginia, and Bob White is the name of the little town he lives in, recently wrote to me, quote, we are desperate. Our benefits are about to lapse unless we get this legislation passed. It cannot be ignored again. Many retired minors cannot afford to pay for their medications if we lose our health care. Or Kenneth, who lives in Mullins, West Virginia, quote, it seems more and more that the attack on coal is no longer an industry attack, but one that is personal on individuals. He went on to ask this question, what about folks like me that worked hard their entire life? Recognizing the significance of this problem, I joined with Congressman David McKinley to introduce legislation in 2013 that addressed both the retiree health care and the looming insolvency of the mine workers' multi-employer pension. Last year, Senator Manchin and I introduced the Miners Protection Act, a very similar bill. The bill demands immediate action. We need to follow through with our commitment to all the hardworking West Virginians and other coal miners across this country. In addition to addressing the health care needs of retirees through the same mechanisms supported by Congress in 1993 and 2006, the Miners Protection Act will ensure the solvency of the multi-employer pension plan that provides benefits to almost 90,000 retirees and surviving spouses. More than 27 of those, nearly one-third, live in my home state of West Virginia. The Miners Protection Act uses unobligated funds authorized by the 2006 AML reauthorization bill to support existing mine working health and pension programs. Let's be clear. Mine retirees do not receive lavish benefits here. The average pension payment is only $560 per month. But these funds are vital to our retirees who live on very small fixed incomes. They are a key part of the local economy in West Virginia and other states where these retirees live. If we fail to act, the pension plan will become insolvent, imposing projected liabilities of over $4 billion on the PBGC, known as the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. If we pass the Miners Protection Act, the pension plan will remain in good standing benefiting taxpayers, beneficiaries, and coal communities. In May, the trustees of the UMWA Health and Retirement Funds announced 
that contributions to the pension funds have dropped by nearly two thirds from last year's levels. This just shows you how devastating our coal communities are. The continued regulatory assault on the coal industry has hastened the decline and threatens the retirement security of our miners. In 2001, the EPA finalized the MATS rule, the mercury and air toxins rule for coal plants. Since that time, our nation has lost more than 40,000 coal jobs, and thousands of those workers are West Virginians. Our state's unemployment is among the highest in the country for this very reason. The impact of other EPA proposals, like the Clean Power Plan, which has been stayed by the Supreme Court, and the stream protection rule that is currently being finalized would make the situation even worse in our coal communities. As I have said many times before, the negative regulatory impact on coal extends far beyond the tens of thousands of families who are most directly affected. A loss of coal severance tax has triggered drastic budget problems, which we just got a one-year solution for, for our state and a lot of our local governments are having to lay off county workers and school, and school workers and school teachers. The severe impact of the health care and pensions on our minors is another consequence of the administration's war on coal. Given that federal policies have played a major role in causing this problem, it is appropriate for the federal government to fulfill its commitment to retired minors who will lose their promised benefits unless we act. The Miners Protection Act is critically important to so many people in my state and across this country. We need to keep the promise of lifetime health care for those retired coal miners whose companies have gone through bankruptcy. And we may need to make sure that our retirees receive the pension benefits that they've worked so hard for. The Miners Protection Act is truly a bipartisan effort. It is supported by Democrats and Republicans and independents in the Senate. And there are 72 co-sponsors on the House bill, including 39 Republicans and 33 Democrats. West Virginians understand that this need not be a political football. As Thomas from Shady Spring, West Virginia put it, quote, this issue is not partisan. This is an easy fix to fund promised pensions. It is important this bill be enacted this year before the temporary solution expires and ends the health care benefits for so many retirees. And before the continued downturn takes an even greater toll on the pension fund. I will continue to work with my colleagues in the West Virginia delegation, Senator Manchin, Congressman McKinley, Congressman Mooney, and Congressman Jenkins, and all of the other co-sponsors of this legislation to see it become law before it's too late.